Hey everyone, for today's sketchbook warm up, we are going to get started exploring shapes a little bit more. So go ahead and open up your sketchbook to the next blank page. I'm actually going to turn mine over this way for today's exercise. And we want to start with our HB because we're going to be sketching. So when we sketch, remember it is more loose we can have a better range of motion if we're moving our whole hand instead of just using our wrist or even just our fingers, like how I'm moving just that part right there. So maybe adjust your pencil so that you can hold it in a way to get a full range of motion or just loosen up your grip and your hand as we start to draw. So as we can see on the slide, to start off, we're gonna choose five or more geometric shapes to draw in your sketchbook for practice. So these are shapes that feel man-made. They have a geometric look. We usually associate them in math class or geometry. So you can pick any five shapes. I'm gonna pick some at random and I'm just gonna start sketching them for the first few minutes. So remember, sketches are light. You don't have to press hard. We would go back in and we could use our pencil to re-outline and erase what we don't want, but we're gonna practice sketching these shapes. So it's not gonna be the final drawing. Very loose looking at your paper to draw the shape, but also looking up at the slide to guide you. I'm gonna redo that one. I'm gonna try again. So it's okay if your lines aren't exactly straight. It's okay as we're warming up. A little crooked in some spots. I almost forgot we need the date and we also need our title so we know which assignment to submit this to. So it will be the 8th or October 9th depending on if you are in first or third hour. It'll be the 8th. 4th, 5th, or 6th will be on the 9th. And then these are our shape studies. Whoops. All right, let's get of it about one more minute. Try to leave some space on some part of your paper so that we have room for the next activity. Get about one more shape in. All right, and then go ahead and put your HB pencil down and then pick up the largest value that you have with you. So if you have the two sitting next to you, pick that one up. Or if you have the six or the five, go ahead and pick that one up. Um, I would recommend that you're using the five or the six for the purpose that we're going to practice on this. So pick three, pick three shapes. And I'm going to pick one that maybe when I outlined it, it was a little wonky. It wasn't really exact. I'm going to practice going back in with my darker value pencil and I'm going to actually adjust. So I'm going to re outline my pencil or my pencil. I'm going to re outline my shape. And this is where I can almost edit it. I can make remake the marks. So that it's the way I want it. Maybe it's a little more exact. And then I could go in with an eraser if I didn't want that sketch to show up and get rid of my beginning stage marks. And let's go ahead and do that with two more shapes. So let's see. So after you sketch, you could use that HB pencil to do the same thing, but just for the sake of practicing, we're gonna use our darkest value to show 
that we're going back in and we're editing, we're making the marks where we actually want them to be. So maybe if we made something crooked or it's not the same length, we can adjust. So like on this triangle, I'm actually bringing this line a little bit farther out to make it long and match this line. And then this is tilted, so I'm going to take my time and try to reconnect or connect this to make it look a little bit more crisp. So there we go. All right. And then for this next part, we're going to use our shapes and we're going to just do a practice session of using shapes to create our structure or the base of our cartoon character and then go back in with our either our pencil pressure pushing it harder to make the marks of the final outline or we could use a darker value to make those marks as well if we don't have a sharpie or anything with us so even if you don't know the powerpuff girls i'm gonna pick our blossom example because there are so many shapes involved that we can use for this example. So we're gonna stick with that cartoon character. Her head is a big circle. So I'm gonna kind of just like make a circle motion before I start putting my pencil on paper to get a circle of where I want her head to be. Notice how I made multiple. So back when I go back in with my pencil to outline parts, I'll pick which part of the circle I think is the best. So we've got her head. All right, and then the body, that picture that we were looking at was um, like a rectangle, kind of more like a trapezoid. It does curve, so I'm gonna make a curved line, but then still keep a rectangle in mind. And then the legs were like ovals, so I can make an oval for her legs. Remember we're sketching, keep it very loose, very sketchy. Another oval for her other leg. I know that this is actually probably too big, but that's okay because we're just sketching out the foundation right now. All right, and then for the arms, they're also ovals. So I'm gonna just make an oval here. There's an oval there, her arms were wide outstretched like she was about to give a hug and then the eyes so the eyes are very very enlarged so we're going to use really big circles for the eyes make some final adjustments later and that mouth was a circle that we're going to make a curved line to mark it in half. The hair is kind of a trapezoid, but with a curve on the top for the connecting with the circle. So I'm just gonna make a line that shows where we're gonna make marks later on for the hair. Kind of looks like she's wearing a cap right now. And then we have the bow, which is like a rounded square up here in the middle of her head and then the ovals for that for the bow all right so you could so if you're sketching let's say i drew the eye right here and the marks are very loose you could use your same pencil and go back in and outline your final marks. I also realized because I'm drawing tilted that that's not a perfect circle. That's okay. All right. Uh, you can do the same thing. It totally moved. I had my sketch of the pupil right down here. I moved it up because I realized that the eye pupil wasn't in this part of the eye looking at the image. It's a little bit more to the top. So I totally moved it. I was confident and moved it. That's what sketching is for. It helps us determine where things need to go. And then I realized that this needs to come, this iris needs to come out more. So I'm actually gonna start my line up here. I like that it comes down here. So I'm gonna almost connect the dot, connect the line, but connect the dot, same concept to the marks I want. 
and then there would be another eye color so then I could draw it in. So the point that I'm trying to make is that you saw that I used the same pencil to sketch and then I can also just press harder so you can see when your pressure is harder you can see the nail turn a different color it's turning lighter and that will signify it's really weird to hold it like this but I wanted to show you when my nail turns color so when I'm sketching my nail is still pink and then when I'm pressing really hard I'm gonna make a different mark when I say apply more pressure, you'll feel it, but you'll also see it when you're pushing your pencil down harder. Um, and your nail might not turn white, but you can just wanted to show you on mine. Um, so you'll notice that your nail will turn that lighter color and then you'll feel how the pressure feels. But since we're doing this virtually, I wanted to try to explain it the best way I could virtually. So I hope that makes sense. All right, so what we're gonna do is now we're either gonna use our HB pencil and apply more pressure to make the outline of Blossom, or we could go back in with one of our different higher value pencils. So you don't really have to worry about the pressure right now. You could just re uh, outline where you want the marks to be. So we're gonna go ahead and let's see, I'm looking at the picture and I'm noticing my circle's pretty round and Blossom's head has actually got more of an oval shape. So I'm gonna actually extend this out a little bit more so it kind of looks a little wider on the sides of the eyes. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a lot of marks, but that's okay. I am going to go ahead and outline her head because I'm confident with that. So I'm just gonna keep a steady hand. Remember, this is just practice. There we go. And then her hair lays on top of her eyes. So I'm going to make that mark first. When we are overlapping, we want to make sure that the eye line wouldn't show up because the hair is laying on top of it. It covers it. So I'm going to do that first and that big triangle chunk comes up like that. And then it goes over. We're gonna make a line over again and then we're gonna go all the way up all the way back down connect it usually she has another chunk here um this image i'm looking at has a line so i'm gonna add a line there and then now the eyes depending on how you drew your eyes you might have to make different adjustments when i'm looking at my blossom i think her eyes need to come out a little bit more down here and then they're gonna just connect right at the top so I'm going to connect from here all the way up and around. So I like to make a mark of where I'm going to go so I can have my eye look ahead and follow. Bring it down. Same thing for here. I'm going to make this mark looks good. This looks good. So I kind of sketch when I do this in this stage and I do want it to come right there. So. And I realize that this probably should go up a little bit more. It doesn't drag as far down. But that's okay. We're just practicing. And let's see. Okay. I'm going to wait to do the eyes. I'm gonna do the mouth and I think it should be a little bit bigger. So I'm actually gonna draw over here, make a curved line. Fill that in. And then we're ready for the arms. So I'm going to start here and her arm goes out and then it comes down around and it connects but it curves more in it's not quite an oval it curves more in so I'm going to soften it and bring it back up and then same for this arm it curves out instead of being an oval 
comes down and then it connects right there. So that sketch is just our guide. It's our guiding foundation. All right, and the reason I didn't do her eyes is to show you some tricks. We'll get to that. So I'm going to not sketch this, or I'm not gonna draw this part of her legs because the legs are coming out of the rectangle body. So I'm gonna outline the rectangle first because when I'm looking at the picture, there's a black line that goes down over and up. So I'm gonna recreate that. I'm gonna go down, over, and up, and I wish I made more of a curve, so I'm gonna make it a little bit more dramatic and come like that. Exaggerated it just a little bit. Okay, and now we can do the legs, so we would erase that. So I'm gonna start from here. If we look at the picture, the leg line starts here, so then it goes down it's a little bit longer, so I'm gonna come out a little farther. There's a line for the shoe. And then this leg actually doesn't come all the way up. So if we look at the picture, the leg comes out right here and it starts right there. So I'm going to ignore that line. I'm going to put little guidelines. It's okay to adjust as you're making your final drawing. It happens. It's really normal, especially when we get into scale and proportion. There we go. We get into scale and proportion when we are working towards making things look realistic, those are gonna be more conversations that we have. And then there's a line, curves for the shoe, right there. Okay, so I'm filling these in on purpose. We're almost done with our blossom. However, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, we did all this work down here, and if I were to draw my eyes up here, I could move my hand and smear all of my work. So I wanted to show you what it looks like. Maybe you use a piece of paper from your sketchbook. Maybe you use an old mail envelope you have at home or something. But after you do all this hard work, you can take your scratch sheet of paper and we're gonna put it and cover up our work so we don't smudge it and ruin it. And then we're gonna sketch so the pupil is closer to the hair. And this one comes a little bit farther down. It's like right there. Not the pupil, the eye shine. And then the pupil, it's confusing since they're so big. Okay, and then the pupil actually comes out pretty far. Has a very bug-like look. And then the color, I was trying to get, check my proportions. The color would come out and down and around and the white is pretty small. This one doesn't even have white showing that much. It's just like a little sliver because that eyes on the side of the face. Okay. And then I sketched and now I'm gonna go back and outline or make my marks appear to show up way more, more of my deliberate decisions in the character that I'm making. You could use your high value pencil to color in the pupil, press hard. Oh my goodness, I just realized we forgot the bow. Oh, and a little band for the little jumpsuit, rectangle, outfit. We're just gonna say outfit. 
I don't know what blossom is. We'll just call it her rectangle. Little band. Color that in. And we're almost done. We're gonna go back to the bow and we're gonna re-outline. This has a, remember a curve, even though it's a rectangle because the cartoonist styled Powerpuff Girls with a lot of curves, a lot of rounded edges so that it looked very bubbly. Um, one of the Powerpuff Girls is bubbles. And I mean, they're supposed to be an elementary school. So it's like, the style is, I would say very elementary. And then these come to a point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that decision now. It actually comes a little farther out. And then same with this one. I'm actually kind of letting my own style come through on this one a little bit too much on this bow. All right, and there we go. There is our character study using shapes first, sketching out the form, sketching out the character, and then going back in with our pencil and applying more pressure and or using a darker value to make the character outlines and more of the official decision of the character shapes and what they really look like. So at this point, um, you would go back with a pencil and you would erase all of your sketch marks but for this I would like for you to leave that so you know or to remind you of doing the sketch first of shapes before you apply outlining and determining the full character so for the sake of this leave your sketch marks and then maybe you could do some more practice and we'll be doing more for this project as well.